Now we're pretty much familiar with Windows, and even here and back in Windows 3.11, you were able to run multiple programs at the same time, uh, minimize them into the background, and launch another program. But in the ST, you basically can only one run program at a time, then shut it down in order to start another. So let's take a look at the best alternative to that to make the Atari multitasking. Okay, you have your ST booting. In this case, I'm using the Steam emulator to boot mine because I have an old and a hardware version of uh, the ST since maybe the 80s. Um, so we're going to go ahead and boot that. What we're going to take a look at today is mainly Geneva, a multitasking system and NeoDesk, an alternate desktop for the ST, both written by Dan Wilga of Grimness Software. But today is mainly about Geneva. I'll cover NeoDesk in more detail in a later video. As you can see, this desktop is considerably different than the standard Atari Gem desktop. That's because of NeoDesk. It changes the appearance of the desktop and has a bunch of improvements to the operating system. The first thing to notice is that uh, Geneva loaded first, so it's the underlying program. And NeoDesk is simply just another application, just like a word processor and all that, except that it controls your desktop. Now you'll notice first that we have the file settings here. We says NeoDesk because NeoDesk is highlighted. So we have all the menu for NeoDesk. Okay. If we switch to Geneva, watch the top menu. It switches to Geneva's menu and the functions that are included with it. And that becomes important when we get to other programs. So let's talk about Geneva. Geneva uh, again, it's a multitasking, so you don't have to quit things. So if you want to run another program, there's a couple of different ways to do it. One is through this file open, and you can go find it. Or the other way is your normal way. If uh, we go to here, we decide we're going to run uh, a different program, okay? In this particular case, we want to, let's say, we, uh, even a game. Uh, let's go chess, okay? So I'm going to run the chess program. But first, let's take a look at it running under a regular ST operating system. And uh, we have it here running. It looks appears the same, but if we uh, minimize it even, it goes down to an icon. But that's part of the game. If we go up here, though, we only have the menu for that. We can't launch anything else unless we quit this and start another program. So even though I can minimize it as an icon, I can't do anything with it. So if we go up here to where uh, the menu is, we go down here and say quit. We return to the desktop where we can launch another program. But going back to Geneva, now I'm just going to double click on it to run the program. By the way, I can drag it out here just like any other time. You'll see that NeoDesk has placed its own icon on it. Uh, but that's regardless of the situation, uh, we can also run it directly here. But let's go ahead and do that. We run the program. And we can choose which, how many moves we want. That's a very fast one. Let's just try 40 moves in 30 minutes. It launches chess in a particular window. Now, at first, also has a color window, which you can change your colors. I'm going to close that temporarily. But now, new chess is running. Now, I can do exactly what I did before. I can minimize it to an icon, but there's a difference. If you notice, it has all the menu up here for that program. If I switch to NeoDesk, there's all its things there. Geneva Manager, its things there. So instead of running it from the file manager, we're going to run a program from Geneva's menu, which I'm going to say open. And I can go anywhere I want, OK, on the hard drive and start stuff up. For example, here's Notator. It's a uh, music program. So if I double click on it, or I say OK, Notator launches C-Lab. And you see once it comes up, there it is running normally, uh, even though the other program is still running. So all of its functions are up here. OK. And you notice now here we have Notator, right? New chess, 
to new manager, new desk. Now, if I go back to the chess program, because it's a small window, it just overlays that. But the menu is switched back there. And there's a ballot menu at the top. It's not notator, but now that. If I want to switch back to notator, I click here, and it's now the front window of programs that are still running. If I want to do a third one, I can go to Geneva Manager, say File, Open, and find another program. Well, here's another program called Disk Doctor, which comes with a Notator, and I can run it. And it's a program that repairs disks, okay, which we're not going to touch right now. But you notice again, it's there, okay? And it's now in the menu of Running Programs. Geneva. If I go back to Notator, there it is there. So let me go over here to this doctor. I'm going to use its file menu. I'm going to say quit. It's gone. And you'll see now that all we have left now are the files here that are running chess and all that. So let's go to chess again. We're going to go back up here. We're going to go to game. We're going to say quit. It's gone. So we're back here to just Geneva Manor Notator. So we'll go to Notator. We quit it. it. Gives us a warning. We go there. And we're back to the desktop just where we started. Now be aware that Geneva is not foolproof. Well, I'm on Geneva maybe, but some of the other programs aren't. Let's go ahead and say open. Okay, I'm going to go over here to um, games. Okay, and although that worked, some of these other ones don't. You'll see that I'm not going to demonstrate it, but they crash. Interesting one is Monkey Island. Let's go ahead and go to that. And sure enough, now you'll notice that Monkey Island launches even in black and white. Sort of interesting. Okay, we're going to hit the escape key so that we get past all the welcome screens and everything. And Monkey Island is here and it runs. Um, it doesn't multitask though. There's no way to get out of it. So we're going to have to uh, quit uh, Monkey Island. And if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, we bring up the menu, we say quit. Are you sure? Yes. And it bombed. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily that was Geneva's fault or whatever else was running. It's just that maybe it's Monkey Island in a particular environment. Let's just go ahead and hit the Enter key. And we see here that Geneva detected the process crash. And since programs now run in isolated space, Geneva handled it and it displayed the error. But if we click on it, instead of having to reboot your ST, we return to the desktop with everything else in order. In fact, any work you had in other programs is still there, so you can continue right where you left off. We do have a slight problem where it seems that Monkey Island changed the colors. So let's see if we can fix that. So in NeoDesk, there's a control panel. Let's just see what happens here if we toggle colors. Yeah, we're back to normal here because somehow the game triggered that. So as far as Geneva and NeoDesk, okay, Nothing went wrong. It just it exited the program and your system is still running. Now, one thing I do want to mention about Geneva, it has a robust uh, text-based help system. If you come over here to options and say help, and this can use this anywhere you are in uh, Geneva, you'll see the first screen comes up, says no help, but then as long as it's set up correctly, it knows when you clicked on it, and it tells you exactly how it will work. Okay, and then you can do quitting gem applications, tear away menus, putting applications to sleep, switching applications. Let's look at switching applications. So you can switch from one, two different types of keyboard shortcut. Alt-Tab, right, sound familiar? Foreground status amongst all running applications and all open desk accessories. Okay, or a hotkey. And you can do that by using the Task Manager keyboard menu under the options. But, okay, to take a look at that, we're going to make sure we're in Geneva. And we're going to go down over here where it says Tasks. 
Well, there's the task. Now we see both the accessories that are running and the programs that are running. But what's more important is here under options, you see your keyboard equivalents. So if we go here and we click here, it might say menu start when you first come into it. For task switch, you click on that and then you create a key combination. And here you'll see I've done control alt and S. To do that, you click on the key and click on the key, it'll change it. So I'm going to say read key again. I'm going to go back to S and I'm going to say Alt, Control, S and say quit. Okay. Now, you got to come over here to settings and say save settings. So now we're set up for that. While we're here, we'll take a look at some of the other options here now. There are Windows menu bars, sizes and styles and all that. Of course, there'll be more options if it was a color. Okay, window colors, dialog, miscellaneous options, which is a long list of those. Okay, there's uh, also, whoops, the um, options here. Under video, if you're at a different resolution, then you switch between low and medium. And you even have options for TT. Uh, so anyways, there's a lot more options here available within uh, Geneva. So again, you have to uh, save your settings. Now, besides tasks and all that, there are so many other things to do to learn about. I would suggest you go to the help files and just start navigating uh, some of these menus here. It tells you how to sit there and do these different things. You can even search for certain topics here that you want to find. And that'll help you uh, understand all the different things that Geneva can do. Okay. Now, before I go, I'm going to actually ask for a donation, but not for me. Uh, if we go to the website of Gribner Software, it still exists. Uh, Dan seems to still be out there. Uh, there's a lot of information you can get. You can actually download the EODS 4 okay, and Geneva, and they've been updated fairly recently. But you can also click on here and go to So I've put PayPal links in the description with either PayPal, PayPal or website, credit so card. You can download the software you can donate to and Dan contribute to him via PayPal. He deserves it. This is brilliant work and a really a shout out to him. So that's it for Geneva Manager. Uh, again, there's a lot more options out there for you to investigate. I'm going to next put out something on NeoDesk where you can redesign stuff, change things up a bit, and all of its different settings it has here as well. So soon to come, hopefully.